Scamp is someone who is mischievous or roguish in a likable way. This week, Crypt TV premieres Scamp and introduced the titular furry little creature to their monster universe. With that in mind, I thought I'd introduce you guys to a furry little creature of my own, Sam. Sam will take it from here. Okay, she doesn't talk, but I'll cover that part. Furry Beast started in horror movies with 1913's The Werewolf, considered to be the first lycanthrope-based film, but it would take 28 years before Lon Chaney Jr. would get covered in yak hair to play Larry Talbot in The Wolfman. Jack Pierce's now iconic monster makeup design was actually created six years earlier for Werewolf of London, but the star of that film, Henry Hull, refused to wear it because he wanted audiences to recognize his face, which was the right call, since no one remembers what The Wolfman looks like, but everyone knows Henry Hull. Chaney's Wolfman will become one of the genre's early icons and define the werewolf for years to come. But all that said, werewolves aren't small or what you would call scamp-like. Really, it would take until the 80s before animatronic innovations would give us the very niche subgenre that Crypt TV scamp lands in. It was really gremlins that launched this particular kind of creature feature. The Joe Dante-directed film introduces us to Mogwai, magical little furry creatures who multiply when they get wet and turn into gremlins when they're fed after midnight. The movie was a huge success and spawned a pile of knockoffs like Critters. You could argue that since it had more sequels and star power, that Critters was a more successful franchise than Gremlins. But that would be a dumb thing to say. Critters director Stephen Herrick would refute claims that the film was trying to knock off Gremlins and it was written first and all that, but come on. The Critters were hedgehog-like aliens on the run from intergalactic bounty hunters. Originally, four movies were made from 1986 to 1992, but the series was revived with the new film Critters Attack and a television series Critters the New Binge, which both premiered this year. Munchies also did its best to capitalize on the popularity of Gremlins. Produced by Roger Corman, who had helped Gremlins director Joe Dante get his start in the business, Munchies was a little more upfront about their intentions. Directed by Tina Hirsch, who like Dante had started as an editor for Corman, the film would also launch a franchise, but the follow-ups, Munchie and Munchie Strikes Back, would have little to do with the first film and be more family-oriented. Along with ghoulies, trolls, hobgoblins, and leprechauns, we also saw a rise in scamps like evil dolls and puppets, but tiny terrors would kind of peter out over the 90s. However, the comeback has been brewing for a while. Chucky never really went that far, and with the success of Annabelle, killer dolls are officially back. Guillermo del Toro produced the remake of 1973's Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, featuring some terrifying fairies. Corin Hardy also explored the dark side of fairy lore with The Hallow, and Mike Doherty's Krampus brought a myriad of minions who fit within what we'll call scamp horror. The gingerbread men and evil teddy bears were certainly what we'd call roguish. Now, we've got critters making their comeback, and there's even new gremlins on the way, with the prequel series Gremlins Secrets of the Mogwai getting a 10-episode order from HBO Max, which sets the stage for scamp. Look for scamp premiering this Friday right here on Crypt TV. So, who's your favorite scamp. Is there a little furry creature I forgot to mention? Let us know in the comments, and remember Fright Hype and Crypt TV are all over the internet. Until next time, keep the horror on the screen and off the streets. Watch new vids every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Only on Crypt TV.